I'd like, to take, I'd like to take the time to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We have been looking at Genesis chapter 7 and the flood, uh, the account of the flood in this chapter. And before we move into Genesis chapter 8, I want to spend some time uh, looking at a major issue around Genesis chapter 7. It's an issue of contention among a number of people, and people have argued both sides of this particular issue. But what I want to do today is I want us to look at some biblical evidence on what I believe the Bible is very clear that this is about, and it's about the extent of the flood. And what I mean by the extent of the flood, there are a group of people who will say that it was a universal flood, that is, that the waters covered the whole earth, and there are also a group of people who say that it was a local or regionalized flood and didn't cover the whole earth, but simply covered a particular area. And of course, we know that those two views are vastly different and that both of them cannot be correct. So what I want to do today in the time that we have is I want to look at some reasons why we know that this flood that happened in Genesis chapter 7 indeed covered the whole earth. And um, I've got many reasons written down here. I want to share some of them with you today. First of all, as you read through Genesis chapter 6 through 9, uh, which are the chapters that cover the flood in the book of Genesis, you will find that more than 30 times in those four chapters, there are expressions that occur that emphasize that the flood was a universal flood. So even in the uh, passage of the Word of God that tells us about the flood, over and over and over again, God either A, tells us very clearly, or B, drops hints to and alludes to the fact that this was indeed a universal flood and not a regionalized flood. Another reason why we know that it was a, re, uh, a universal flood was because the purpose of the flood was to destroy man from the face of the earth. The Bible tells us that in Genesis chapter 6, 7 and verse 7. It says, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. So the purpose of the flood, according to this passage, was that the judgment of God was falling on all of mankind because of their sin. And uh, the only way that all of man could be destroyed from the earth was for the flood to be a universal flood. Not only was it there to destroy all man, but it was also there to destroy all animal life from the face of the earth. In Genesis 6, verse 17, it says, And I, behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, which is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Now that would not be true were it just a regional localized flood. And then in Genesis 7, 22, it says, In whose nostrils was a breath of life, of all that was in the dry land died. So we see from that that it had to be a universal flood in order for all of mankind and all of the animals to be destroyed in that flood. And then not only were the mankind and the animals to be destroyed, but the earth itself was to be destroyed. In Genesis chapter 6, and in verse 13, it says, God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. If it had been just a regional flood, it would not have destroyed the earth. It would have just destroyed a part of the earth. We know that it was also a universal flood because the Bible tells us that the waters covered the mountains in Genesis chapter 7. Verse 20, it says, 15 cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. In Genesis 8 and verse 5, it says, the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. And in the 10th month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. So the Bible makes it very clear there that the mountains were covered. As a matter of fact, 15 cubits over, 22 feet over the highest mountain peak at that time, the Bible tells us is where the water was. Now that flood was caused by a 40-day downpour, as we looked at in previous days in our studies, plus the fountains of the great deep being broken up. The Bible tells us that in Genesis 11 verse, or 7 verse 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the mountains of the great deep broken up, 
and the windows of heaven were open. So there we see the simple truth that uh, of the 40 days of, of downpour plus the fountains of the great deep being broken up. It also is obvious that it is universal in nature because of the duration of the flood. It lasted for over a year. When you compare the dates in Genesis 7 and verse 11, in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month of the 15th day of the month, keep it that in mind, the, day that, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open. Now, when you compare that with Genesis 8 and verse 13, it says, and it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. So we see that they were in the ark um, over a year, which makes it evident of the fact that it was universal as it took so long for it to dry up once again. We also know this was universal because the ark was constructed for the purpose of keeping the people that were on the ark and the animals that were on the ark alive. Notice what it says in Genesis 7 and verse 3. It says, of fowls also in the present, er, of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. If it had been just a local flood, the ark would not have been needed. All God would have told them to do was migrate to an area where there was not going to be a flood. The fact that God told them to build an ark is evidence that the flood was worldwide because, think about it, it took him 120 years to build the flood, or build the ark rather. He could have migrated quite a ways in 120 years, but migration would not have saved him from the flood. Therefore, God says to Noah, you need to build an ark. And uh, beyond that, the ark was too large for just a local flood. Listen to how big this boat is. It says, this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. Genesis 6, verse 15. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. That's a 450 foot long boat. The breadth of it, seven, uh, 50 cubits. That's a 75 foot wide boat. And the height of it, 30 cubits, or 45 feet tall. Way too big of a boat for what you would need for a simple local flood. Not only that, but I also want you to consider this today as we close. If the flood had been a local flood, then God has broken his word many times since that flood happened. You say, what in the world are you talking about? Well, listen to what it says. Genesis 8, verse 21, it says, The Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. And then you compare that with Genesis 9, verse 11. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be any neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Verse 15, I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and water shall no more become a flood to destroy all the earth. So if it was just a local flood, then um, the promises that God made that he would no more destroy the earth in that way in a similar fashion would be wrong. We've had local floods since then. There has never been a universal flood but there have been local floods. So if that were what God was talking about in these verses, then God has broken his word. God is a liar. And of course, we know that that is impossible, that God, that, that is not true. In the book of Titus, I believe it's chapter 1, verse 2, it says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Yes, friends, God is a uh, God of truth. His word is truth. The Holy Spirit is truth, and uh, his way is truth, and he will not lie. We can rest assured that he is a God who keeps his word. Friends, there's other evidence that we could look at as well, but this is sufficient for us to remember the simple truth that when the Bible talks about this flood, that it is not a local regionalized flood that is being talked about here, that it was indeed a worldwide flood that destroyed every living person and every living animal that was alive upon the face of the earth. And the purpose for this judgment 
what, or the purpose for this was the judgment of God upon the sin of mankind. God, once again, is going to judge this world. He's going to purify this world the next time by fire. And I encourage you, friend, if you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, that you would come to him, that you would seek refuge for him, from, in him, and that you would come to him for your sins to be forgiven and for that burden of sin to be lifted off of you. Next day, we will come in to Genesis chapter 8 and begin to study there. Have a great day.